in the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. First on our program this evening is a public hearing. This public hearing is a public easement for RW Vacation uh, in Kingston Phase Lot 5, Lots 1 through 15, creating 15 lots located on Aldwych Avenue Northwest. Do you have any further clarification for this, Mr. <coughs> Helms? On the map there behind Mr. Showalter, there's some easements that they don't need now, and part of the right of way which was for a cul-de-sac, which will not be needed anymore. So that's what they're proposing to vacate. Right. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to this request? <coughs> If not, then we will close this public hearing and move on into our order of business. You have a copy of the minutes of the last meeting, Council. You've had an opportunity, I hope, to look over those. We'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And the motion carries. The public hearing was held on December the 4th for a rezoning request by Marine Holding for property located at 310 Bell Road. Do we have a recommendation from the Planning Commission? Yes, sir, we do. Whereas the Christopher Planning Commission acting upon a rezoning request by Marine Holding LTD for property. 310 Bell Road, Northeast, from General, from I-2 General Industrial to B-3 General Business has found the following, has found following a duly advertised public hearing that the public necessity, convenience, general wel welfare, and good zoning practices permit changing the zoning of the property. Therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Commission recommends that the Town Council rezone property at 310 Bell Road, Northeast, from I-2 General Industrial to B-3 General Business Day, this 10th day of December, 2012, <coughs> and 6, 4, and 1 abstain, or 1 abstain, and 1 absent. Right. You will recall, Council, this is the area where there is a little school, and we'll take action on that a little later in the program. It's my privilege this evening to recognize a young man that I've known for a long time. And he has done quite an accomplished job here in the last 12 years in Christiansburg. I would like to read this resolution. First of all, I'd like for Garland Linkus and Mrs. Linkus, if you'll step up here, please. This resolution reads, whereas a community outreach program called Christmas Kitchen is held annually in the Christiansburg area, provides delicious holiday meals for on Christmas Eve for hundreds of residents, not only of Christiansburg, but Montgomery County as well. Whereas Christmas Kitchen was initiated in 2001 by Garland Linkus, who continues to provide leadership in making this event possible. Whereas, approximately 5,000 meals have been served to local residents during the 12 years that the Christmas Kitchen has been in operation. And, whereas, over 150 <coughs> volunteers from the community assist with the event in the preparation of food, setting up the meeting place, serving the food, greeting participants, and doing all those jobs that ensure the success of the event. And whereas in addition to the meals 
served in person, many meals are delivered in, to people in need who are unable to attend the event and to members of the Christiansburg Police Department and the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office and the jail who are on duty on Christmas Eve. And whereas the Christmas Kitchen is a wonderful example of community members, local businesses, and governmental agencies working together to help those less fortunate and to ensure that everyone has a special holiday experience. And whereas the Christmas Kitchen, Garland Lankus, and volunteers of the event were recognized by the Virginia House of Delegates, the Senate, and the General Assembly by a resolution commending all who work to make the Christmas Kitchen successful in providing local citizens a place to enjoy a Christmas dinner and to fellowship with one another. Now therefore be it resolved that the town, Christiansburg Town Council meeting in regular session December the 4th, 2012 adopts this resolution in appreciation to Garland Lincas, the volunteers, the area business support in making the the Christmas kitchen available to residents and offer our best wishes for continued success. Garland, you've done a great job. Thank you. Mayor, once you and get over thank us, thank you. Once you get over beside him and hold up the All right, we can do that. Resolution. You want me to get between them? All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. several years and it's just amazing that the job that he does and the number of people that he takes care of it's just uh Carl, and how, how many we're talking about at a time 200 300 god's been good to us thank yeah. you for all your help and what you guys with the lucas family please stand this is my daughter and yes. my son-in-law and the three little ones of scott and uh leanne helsing uh, this is a double pleasure for me tonight. So, well, thank you for being in the, being here, and thank you for the work that you do, Garland. Best wishes. Can I say it's Monday at the Boost Lodge, eleven to two. Come and enjoy. All thing I request is that you come with a hug and a smile. That's all you need to do. I will be there. Thank yes, you. you. Will. <laughs> so, what were the other six, seven, eight? You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, uh, Garland. Uh, if you want to be excused, that's we quite all right. we got to get to bed. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Brad Epperly, Epperly, Director of Parks and Recreation, has a presentation for council. Mr. Mayor and members of town council, I, I want to thank you for having me tonight. I'm actually coming here today to, to make a, a great announcement for the town of Christiansburg. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to inform each of you all and the residents of Christiansburg that the town of Christiansburg and the Harp Raiders Sports Complex has been selected to be the host site of the 2013 United States Specialty Sports Association 11 and under as well as 12 and under Baseball World Series this coming July. Uh, it's a great accomplishment for the town of Christiansburg and the entire New River Valley. The World Series will take place July the 9th through the 14th of uh, this coming year, 2013. Teams will be in our area and they will be staying for a minimum of three nights. Um, so that's a great thing for us. We can expect anywhere between 30 to 50 teams for this event. Um, Different from the World Series of past, uh, you know, we've hosted Dixie Youth World Series in the past. Uh, this is a USSSA event, so it's a travel team oriented uh, World Series and event. Uh, we'll have teams that will definitely be from like North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia. We could reach out <coughs> to some other states as well. Um, so we're really looking forward to this. 
this is the first time that our area has hosted a USSSA World Series. We do a lot of local USSSA events, but this is our first for doing a USSSA event. Um, there's a little bit of difference in the tournaments that we've hosted in the past uh, with the Dixie tournaments. We provide housing and, and other types of items like that. Uh, with this type of an event, we don't provide the housing. Uh, the, the teams come in and they purchase the housing on their own. So it's a it's a win-win for the town of Christiansburg and the New River Valley. This particular event will maintain its tournament headquarters at the Harkrader Sports Complex. Uh, again, placing our sports complex on the map in the sports world. Uh, we could possibly use the Kiwanis Fields as well. I've also reached out to our neighbors uh, in Pulaski, Montgomery County, and also Radford. Uh, they have agreed to come on board and, and help us in a regional effort for this type of an event which is a great stepping stone for us to increase our market of sports tourism in the New River Valley. The local USSSA director, Scott Fisher and Mike Divers, regret that they were not able to be here tonight. They've been forced with some sickness and pneumonia and flu and a couple things like that. I told them to stay. We have to not hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, they sent me an email today and I wanted to share this with everyone. Uh, from, from Mr. Fisher, on behalf of USSSA Baseball, Mike and I wanted to say thank you to Brad Epperly, Chuck Muncy, and their staff for helping us win the 2013 11 and under and 12 and under World Series. We've been playing USSSA Baseball in the Christiansburg area for the past six years. The support that has been given to our program has been tremendous. Our team, supporters, and fan base have all had a great deal of respect for the facilities in the Christiansburg area, especially the Hark Raider Sports Complex. We look forward to a great event and we'll do whatever we can to do on our behalf to make this World Series event one of the biggest ever hosted at the Hark Raider Sports Complex. Respectfully, Scott Fisher, Mike Divers, USSSA Baseball. That's a compliment not only to, to, to our Parks and Recreation Department, but compliment to the town, to the residents, I was in a tourism meeting this morning and, and a gentleman spoke about, you know, when you meet people, be nice to them. And, uh, and, and that, that impression lasts for a long time. And, and that is what he's trying to relay in his information in his email. The presence of Christiansburg and, and the way that we treat our guests is important and that's why they want to continue to, to basically step up the scale and, and to be able to host the World Series. This, this announcement tonight makes me very happy. The goal of this World Series is to have games played during the daytime hours. So this is enhancing basically working with our community and our businesses so that they are off the ball fields by four or five o'clock in the afternoon so that they can go to our businesses, be able to in, enjoy our, our restaurants and, and items like that and, and other tourism things that we have here in our, our area. Um, I'll leave you with this to ponder about the future of sports tourism in our area. With being able to do the Dixie World Series, having the aquatic center events that we have, having the basketball tournaments that we have, the baseball and softball events that we have, I think that we can look towards the town of Christiansburg now as becoming known as the town where champions are crowned. And I'm, 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 I'm happy to say that. I'd like to thank you for your time and support for the Department of Parks and Recreation while we continue to serve and enhance our residents and their quality of life through the recreational opportunities here, that also allows us to help add to the economic development throughout our community through sports and recreational related tourism efforts. I just want to thank you and want to make you all aware of that. Well, thank you, Mr. Great. Epperly. <coughs> Congratulations to you and Mr. Munsey for <coughs> bringing that World Series to Christiansburg. I tell you, the word's getting around. And I would, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize Chuck because Chuck Muncy has had a tremendous amount to do with the basically working together with USSSA, the relationships that he has. In, in this business, that means everything. The relationships and the respect that you form between each other allow you to be able to do events like that. Chuck, I want to thank you for what you've done. Well, the bird told me that you were going to be making an announcement tonight. This is probably the best news we've heard since the last announcement about a World Series coming. That's so true. thank you. That'll yes, fill up our hotels, motels, restaurants. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Yes, sir.
I gotta ask you with U Triple S A, which is huge, getting them in the area, obviously. <coughs> um, how you were able to work with all, basically our entire region? I mean, I'm thinking about. I'm thinking, for instance, Randolph Park. They're willing to give us the five six days, and they're working we, with uh, you on that. Uh, I, we, I, when I first came on board as Parks and Recreation Director, one of my main initiatives from a regional effort was to get other Parks and Recreation Directors together so that we can work together. And you've been doing that. And, and we've been doing that. We've been having quarterly meetings. Uh, Chuck and I actually had a meeting most recently yesterday um, and, and talked with the directors uh, of not only about the World Series but about local tournaments. because. The one important thing about a World Series event is you're not just going to get a World Series event. You have to have that uh, recognition. You have to have the respect to be able to do the local tournaments and things as well because their organization goes as their local tournaments go. Um, the one thing that I wanted us to do from a regional effort is be able to market each other. And what we're planning to do is to do basically a master schedule uh, of events that are held in Christiansburg, events that are, held, that are held at Montgomery County, at Kulaski, at Radford, and basically do a, a, a master schedule of that. <coughs> One, it's great for the teams to be able to see where the locations are, where the fields are going to be played, where, where the tournaments are going to be played, um, but you know, it just helps everyone work together. We're able to market our tournaments through right. Kulaski, through Radford, through, through Montgomery County. So, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a full circle, and uh, I think it's very important uh, as, as we go further along uh, on the stepping stone of having that regional effort to be able to accomplish the goals that we want to for, for major events and major tournaments. And correct me if I'm wrong, but like you triple S and other your large sanctioning bodies, you've got to have a certain number of fields in a particular geographic area that are willing to come on board. How many did you get on board? That's correct. Well, we, you know, we have... Uh, we basically have Radford, we have Montgomery County, we have we have uh, Christiansburg, and, and I've also spoke with Pulaski. So, you know, a, n a number of athletic fields, and you know, in our master schedule, the one reason we had the meeting the other day is, you know, each each department, each locality, still have control of their their facilities, but being able to have those additional facilities and working together, it just gives you so much more. And, and when you're going out to bid. Uh, on tournaments and things like that, it, it gives you a better avenue to be able to gain that success. Okay, thank you, Brad. Thank Keep you us all. apprised of your planning for this event and what we can do to assist you. We'll do that. Thank you. All, all. right, thank, thank you. you. Good news. At this time, we'll hear from any citizen who would like to address council on <laughs> any matter. This is your opportunity to speak to council on anything that you would like to speak about anyone hearing none then we'll close that part of the citizens hearing and we'll move on to the discussion you've heard the re the recommendation of the planning commission for the rezoning request by marine holdings for the property at 310 bell road and what is your pleasure without hesitation mr mayor i would move that we accept the planning commission's recommendation and rezone. Second. second. Motion and a second to rezone this portion of Bell Road. Further discussion? <coughs> Ms. Clerk, will you poll counsel on this matter? Yes, sir. <coughs> Councilman Barber? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hubbard? Aye. Councilman <coughs> Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Councilman Van Hoosier? Aye. I believe that's a 6 0 vote and that motion carries. Thank you. We have a request to vote, vacate 2,280 square foot portion of a right of way located behind. 2055 North Franklin Street on the southern side of Sunset Drive Northwest. And I believe that's in the area where the proposed apartment complex. Well, it's off of Farm. It's off Farmview Road. Right. Break a piece okay. of I move we approve the request. Second. Motion and a second to approve this request to vacate this 2,280 square feet. 
Ms. Clark, will you poll counsel on this matter? Yes, sir. Councilman Barber? Aye. Councilman <coughs> Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Councilman Van Hoosier? Aye. That motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Council met in a closed session at right before this meeting <coughs> to interview prospective candidates for the Christiansburg Planning Commission. And at this time, we will hear. I move that we appoint the two individuals that we interviewed during the closed session to the Planning Commission conditional on a, a successful background check. Second. Motion and a second. Do you want to add that the appointments will be made January 2nd if the if the background if checks the background are complete? Checks are that, that's fine. Yeah. First council meeting after the background check is going to be back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Any discussion on that motion and second? Both very qualified. I thought so. That's about the discussion you can I say. thought so. Extremely. I believe everybody was in agreement. All right, Ms. Clerk, if you'll poll counsel on this matter. I'm sorry, did we have a second? A second, yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Councilman Barber? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Councilman Van Hoosier? Aye. And that motion is 6 0. Thank you. Motion is carried. <laughs> we have a pro proposed cost recovery from <coughs> DUIs and reckless driving convictions. This is an ordinance. Public hearing was held on December the 4th, 2012. <coughs> Council, what is your recommendation? Mr. Mayor, again, without hesitation, I think the ordinance is drafted fantastic. I would move that we accept it, uh, what's in our packet, and uh, the proposed ordinance as written. I'll <coughs> second. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further discussion? We've talked about this, and as Mr. Barber always says, we beat this horse to death, but it's fantastic. <laughs> and I think it will certainly enhance the ability of the, uh, frankly, the police department to be able to cover some of these costs of which our citizens shouldn't be covering anyway. And so I, mean, I think it's long overdue, and I'm looking forward to passing this. And what it means is the town will recoup the cost of police officers having to make these Well, police officers, emergency personnel, right. rescue squads, fire department, whoever responds to an accident, exactly. and we get that money back uh, pursuant to statute. It's regarded as a, as a court cost at this point. Okay. Ms. Clerk, we'll need you to poll counsel again, please. Councilman Barber? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Councilman Van Hoosier? Aye. And that motion carries 6 0. And the ordinance is adopted. <coughs> Number four, we have modifications to the organizational cooperative agreement between Montgomery County <coughs> and the towns of Blacksburg and Christiansburg for the creation and the implementation of a joint tourism program. And you know, we have signed off on the agreement and we have modifications to that agreement. Mr. Helms, you? This, I was planning on bringing for a vote tonight. However, um, there'll be a second change that we need to discuss. So at the next meeting, we should have all that information together and be able to bring to council. The two issues, one is um, the director originally going to be a contractor but because we're actually directing the person how their their work schedules and things like that there can't be a contractor so they have to change it saying they'll be uh, appointed and operate under the tourism board and um, there's some amb ambiguity in the um, payment of the one percent and we'll clarify that for the so this will be coming back at the next meeting or the second <coughs> of January. 
Would we, we need to vote to table that then, Mr. Mayor, or just would we okay to? Well, <coughs> what we'll do is take it up again <coughs> as soon as those clarifications are made with respect to 15%, I believe, of 1%. Eight, 85% of the 1%. 85% of the 1% that we take in from the, the uh, sure. hotel tax, the motel tax. It's not in the completed form yet. Right. No. Right. No, there was some ambiguity, as Mr. Helm said, with respect to uh, how the monies are generated and paid. So we'll take that up at the next meeting. Can we put that on the agenda, Mr. Helm? <clears throat> All right, while we've got you nodding your head, how about the town manager's report? I'd like to set some public hearings. I'd like to set one for revenue recovery uh, for the 15th of January. Talk about. And the other one for 15th of January. The staff's recommending that we add the improvements at North Franklin Street and Cambry Street intersection to the six-year plan for VDOT, making our second priority. Right now our second priority, our first priority is uh, Pepper's Ferry Road, which is under construction. Second priority is the connector road, which will be a, it's very expensive and be a long time, so we'd like to try to get the intersection at Cambry Street and North Franklin improved, which hopefully will be a little quicker process. We need to have a public and hearing to that discuss is part that. of the VDOT six year plan. Yes, sir. Okay. You want to set those public hearings both for January 15th? Yes, sir. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to hold these two public hearings. One is revenue recovery, and the other is the VDOT six year plan. And we have one more to set. There's already four public hearings for the 15th of January. Uh, one additional one we need to set, and it could be either 15th of January or 5th of February, was vacation of 15-foot alley from Montague Street to Park Street. It's the one that goes behind the old um, school board offices. They're not the ones that requested it, but it goes all the way through from Montague to Park Street. So, um, so we set that for either the 15th or the 5th of February. Since uh, we have four public hearings that night. Would it be okay to set that for February the 5th? It's fine with me. I have no issue with that though. Got problems? All right. We Move have a February motion 5th. to that effect. Move February 5th. All right. We've got two motions on the floor mm -hmm. here. Let's take the first one. Uh, the January 15th date for the revenue mm -hmm. recovery and the six-year plan. We already voted on, already voted on it. Did we vote on it? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Well, did, did I doze off there for a minute? <laughs> okay, let's, let's vote on the February 5th. Yeah. That's the uh, vacation of the alleyway. What's the name of that street, Mr. Hamels? It goes between uh, <coughs> Montague Sorry. Street and Park Street. Park Street Park. It's an alley. Parallels Junkin Street. All right. I so move February that. 5th. <laughs> All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you. And the last thing I have is the signal study at Patrick's Way in North Franklin Street. The uh, engineering department beat out completed that uh, late last week. The, it does not meet at least six of the eight warrants to install a signal light, so I don't think we should <coughs> install one at this time. Hmm. Could they run that study two o'clock in the morning? No, it's a twelve hour ran from six thirty AM to six thirty PM. Would you mind one more time, Mr. Helm, just reading that part, the whole part one more time? The entire the It didn't did not meet six of the eight warrants. At least six of the eight. There's two that uh well one of them's not applicable and I don't know how you count that, but uh, and you're referring to me, I'm, I'm sorry, the location again? Oh, Patrick's Way right. on North Franklin Street next to the new Waffle House. Right. Uh, didn't even come close. The only thing, it did come close on accidents 
We had four accidents in the past year that could have been prevented by that. It requires five. The year before there was none, I think. The year before that was two, or the other way around. There's been a total of six accidents in three years. Now there's that in, in, increased traffic there as well. <coughs> so we did. We, you know, waited to count it after it opened. After what? <coughs> that no. the big the thing that we had brought up and. and I think even the street committee had studied it was the when you're coming out of the Waffle House there between the um, pharmacy and the Waffle House and if you want to turn left in front of Trinity Baptist Church you're going left like you're going towards the mall area I don't know if there's a more dangerous left-hand turn in the town of Christiansburg but not turning <coughs> left because you've got 45 mile an hour crest in the hill you've got 45 mile an hour coming over the stop from the stoplight down from the rec center you've got uh, traffic of course in the left-hand turning lane going in between the Waffle House and the pharmacy and you've got residents basically from Oak Tree coming out trying to go left. I mean, I, I understand it might not be enough for the traffic signal, but I would almost like to refer it back if it's not already at the street. <coughs> I, I, when after this was brought to me by residents of that of that little, the, of the, I forgot the name of the street there, <coughs> the Waffle House, that Oak Tree Street there, I can't recall. Um, it was because they had such difficulty trying to get out and they were concerned about going left. I, I, uh, I, I, would have I just don't want to end right now with the, with yeah. the lack of I would have no problem with the street committee at least taking the information that was gathered mm -hmm. and having it explained to us in detail. Please. How soon can we request another traffic count, Mr. Helms? I would do one every day. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> well, it's, it's, but, it's, but if there's no accidents but the, that day, then well, there's, it doesn't meet the not, requirements. <clears throat> There are eight traffic signal wards. A minimum of three have to be met before you consider. Did it meet the traffic? No. A minimum of three. It so met. We got six. No, we got uh, no six, six were eight. not met. There were two that were met, and Just I haven't a, seen the report. So the two. Yeah, it's a good. One of them was not applicable because one of them dealt with schools. Of the two that weren't met, and yeah. the third one, I mean, the other one, I'm not positive. And there, there are other intersections in town that are equally troublesome. The one just up the street coming out of McDonald's is pretty hairy in the morning, too. I bet you, I bet you there's more accidents there. It's not to take away, right. and the same argument can be made for Quinn Stewart coming out of 114. Right. Uh, can I ask you one question just to uh, Mr. H uh, Stipes or, or Mr. Van Hoosier as, as a street committee member? Uh, and just because I don't understand, and you can educate me and as well as people that are here. The... I take it that one of the criteria that Mr. Helms was mentioning about being located in, located, I guess, in close proximity to a school would be one of the, the rationales behind why there's a stoplight there if you just go up the road about um, a, a quarter mile with the location between right there where the Christopher High School is located. And, um, it's all traffic driven. And, and that traffic is more or less than the traffic that's going to be a quarter mile down the road? Most Oops. of it is driven by what Side street traffic. <clears throat> yeah, potential conflicts. Okay. Um, we call it when there's an accident. That's called a conflict, and it, it all is driven by safety and the potential conflicts. And because there are hazards with stopping traffic, too, sure. even for a signal, uh, you have. Uh, but it's all driven by uh, safety, and uh, it's not driven by the delays on the side street that people have to wait and and so forth. But, if they turn into accidents, then yes. So, but that's really what is driven by is uh, weighing, uh, uh, weighing the potential negative effects of putting in the stop stoplight versus the, the benefits of putting sure. it in. Well, I'd like I'd like to support what Jim Court said, and let's take a look at it. Absolutely, I'd like to see mm -hmm. this. Yeah, I'll certainly. Yeah. But let's yeah. explain it also because I mean. Four accidents there, and I think Brad, you mentioned even up at McDonald's, there's probably more. And I, more. I don't know. But I don't I like to expand it to the that area on what we can do because I mean, there's been a lot of discussion we've had, depending on the study about possibly doing just right turns only right. out of certain places, right. certain areas. Mm -hmm. And, and frankly, I mean, sense. and I misspoke, mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Show Walter, when I said it was the most dangerous section going left there. The most dangerous section, I don't think, was beyond, beyond doubt, is trying to turn left coming out of McDonald's, going left towards the high school. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just you can't see a thing. Okay. You, um, know, you know, a comment, too, concerning about the light at the high school. I was teaching uh, at, at Christianburg High before they had that light. And I would say kids were getting into wrecks all yeah. over the daily basis there. I mean, it was about as, as dangerous as it can be right there. 
So that light was, was definitely needed. Oh, I'm not arguing we shouldn't have had it. I, I just was wondering about the traffic amount from that intersection to a quarter mile down the road. But then again, you don't have next to the high school coming out from the residential areas as well. So I'm and I'm going to ask the street committee if they will study this data that has mm -hmm. been given to us by VDOT and uh, make a recommendation or make another request for another traffic study. But uh, that, that's too dangerous to just keep ignoring. I agree. And the McDonald's uh, exit up there, I learned from bitter experience. Uh, don't, stick the traffic your, light. Don't, don't stick your car out there in the road unless it's clear. It cost me $3,000 to learn that. <laughs> 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 to upgrade the North Franklin Street, Cambry Street intersection, we can have ask to have all this, this whole stretch in there as part of that upgrade. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. Because yeah. all of, if you put signals in, they're going to have to be synchronized with that, right. that one up there. And you can't put, it would be too close together to put two signals in, one at McDonald's and one at Patrick's yeah. Way. One thing well, that's a good point. One thing that's possible there to upgrade that would be to combine some entrances. Yeah. Then you drive up, then you drive up the traffic to where it makes a lot of sense to do that. But mm -hmm. that's we'll take that up. Well, there's another danger right there in that same area, and that's the intersection in front of the recreation center, <coughs> with uh, four lanes of traffic. Two of them go, and then two others go on alternate lights. And those lights are not supposed to be visible from one lane to the other lane. And there was a serious accident there the other day when a lady thought it was her signal that changed and it was the other signal. So anyway, that's another one that they need to really take a serious look at. What else, Mr. Helms? That's all I have, sir. Oh, next meeting is Wednesday, January the 2nd, since the first Tuesday is on. Oh, January the 1st. We've already moved our meeting. <laughs> Y'all said it was about two, a month ago. I was told. No, he's referring to something else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there anything else to come before council? Mayor, you try hard, court. I'll make this quick. I know uh, a lot of us have commitments, but uh, today uh, was the first uh, strategic meeting of the Montgomery County Tourism. Um, I don't know how many showed up. Did they have an official count between the county, but. Um, uh, I know a lot of the town staff, uh, Brad was there, of course, Nicole was there, Barry, uh, Randy, I mean, uh, uh, Becky was there. There was a great turnout from staff, but also business owners uh, in Christiansburg. That was, that was the biggest thing for me, is to have a good turnout from Christiansburg, so we were well represented, and we were. And it, it, it's, if, I would encourage you, if you get an opportunity to talk, go in and talk to Lisa. <coughs> Um, she's excellent. So I really believe that when there's an objective in hand, it's not about personal what she gets out of it. I mean, she goes for it. And today it was it was uh, facilitated by Virginia Tourism and her, but uh, it was it's pretty enlightening. Um, I think we the town uh, we really uh, we did well with the turnout. Mm -hmm. I just like to thank staff and. And just it's great to hear what Brad said about the regional cooperation because one thing everybody uh, echoed today was uh, if you have an event in Blacksburg or Pulaski or, or Floyd or Giles, typically Christiansburg benefits from it because we are the economic hub of the area. So that makes me feel great. And I, I'm glad Brad and, and Chuck, I'm glad you guys are moving forward with this with regional because we do see a, a benefit from that more than most uh, communities and municipalities in our area. All right. Thank you, Councilman. Yes, sir, Mr. Hubbard. I just wanted to mention that the swim meet that we had at the Aquatic Center this past weekend, I think it's one of the largest meets we've had there. There was over 700 kids, and they were here from at least three different states, Pennsylvania, Maryland, this state. I talked to some people from Newport News. Uh, the meet went on for three days, and uh, of course the people were just about to fill up our motels. And uh, just a, a great thing for the Aquatic Center and a great thing for Christiansburg. Okay, good, good. Uh, the Aquatic Center has proven to be worth everything we said it was worth, but the teams coming in here and the, the meets that have been held, and we're very pleased with that. Anything else to come before council? If not, we're adjourned, and Merry Christmas to everybody.